So I think that when you do AI for games, we're really doing AI for the society that we are going to live in in the future. And a lot of the ideas here about generating environments, testing environments with automatic players, learning to play in the style of particular players, replicating styles, understanding people from how they play, these ideas are going to come carry straight over to the metaverse or whatever we may call it of tomorrow. Welcome to my office. I do artificial intelligence for games and games for artificial intelligence. We're talking about how to make AI methods play games, but even more, how to make AI methods create games or help humans design better games or understand games or understand players and so on. On top of that, I also work with how can we use video games and other such benchmarks to create better AI methods. And what does this mean for the possibilities of creating artificial general intelligence? Some people think that video games is kind of a niche activity, it's not a serious activity, it's something that only a particular people do. But in fact, most people play video games. Most people are gamers. Retirement homes of the future are going to be full of game consoles. It's going to be beautiful. Beyond this, I think video games are more and more infusing society. We're going to see more and more things take place in virtual worlds. And these virtual worlds are essentially video games. They're built on video game technology. They're built on video game design principles and so on. So video games are really, really important to humans and human culture. They're just getting more important all the time. Now, in this context, of course it is important with how can we use artificial intelligence to help people be creative in this world or to basically have stand-ins for humans that perform actions or understand what people are doing and try to replicate it. At the same time, these kind of video games offer a lot for trying to understand intelligence and artificial intelligence. When I finished high school, back in Sweden. I wanted to understand the mind, so I wanted to study philosophy and psychology, and I realized after a while that I wasn't making much progress. So I gradually transferred into computer science, and I sort taught myself programming so I could make video games. I went into artificial intelligence so I could build minds, so I could study them and understand intelligence. I thought I was going to make artificial intelligence for robots, but robots are very, very slow, and I'm an impatient person, I don't want to do this. So I figured out you could do the same thing in video games. Think of it this way. Games are designed to challenge our mind, and a good game is designed to basically bring out a sequence of challenges where we gradually get better at playing the game. So this is a perfect kind of test bed for artificial intelligence that gives you a sequence of challenges bit by bit. I think the most obvious effect that my work has on people is that it helps game developers make better games. I have developed a bunch of methods for playing games, which is useful for testing when you're building games. My team and I have developed a bunch of methods for generating game levels and game worlds and game maps and so on that are very useful for creating many kinds of games. In a more indirect manner, I would like to think that I'm contributing to better ways of developing and testing general artificial intelligence algorithms. So my work has been, for example, characterizing issues with a type of artificial intelligence called reinforcement learning that is widely used all over. And I've helped diagnose issues with generalizing what has been learned by these algorithms. There's an extremely wide variety of video games available. And what they have in common is that they're all designed to challenge our minds in different ways. You can think of video games as a, an inverse of, the, of human intelligence. Basically, you can use them to study what humans are good at. What's interesting here is that different video games challenge us in so many different ways, so they challenge the algorithms we're developing in very many different ways at the same time. That's why it's really, really important to sort of gauge the wide variety of games that are out there and a wide variety of game designs and do our best to really try to learn to play them and learn to design them and learn to design for them. A big project that I co-led was called the General Video Game Artificial Intelligence Framework and General Video Game Playing Competition, where we designed the language you could use to describe simple video games. And these video games are, think of 1980s style, 2D, 8-bit arcade games. We encoded a lot of games in this language and had a game engine that could play all of them. 
And then we had people submit the best algorithms and they were playing games that they had never seen before. So you couldn't actually sort of tailor your solution to a particular game. And this unleashed a lot of creativity where people are coming up with really interesting new algorithms for this. We also tried the addressing the adverse problem of like how do you design new games to fit here. So you can imagine that you could have AI algorithms design games played by other AI algorithms. And we use a number of uh, methods based on artificial evolution where you basically take Darwinian evolution from nature and make an algorithm inspired by it and you use that algorithm to design the new games. Finding out how to model what humans uh, like to play is really, really hard on its own. So I've spent a lot of time trying to do various kinds of research to understand this, including having people play different games and different game levels, mark out what they like, what they don't like, and come up with features for machine learning models that can learn to predict this. One thing that we found is really important is the strategic depth of a game. You want games that a good algorithm can play well, a less good algorithm can play less well, and a bad algorithm, maybe not at all. And if you can use that as a stand-in for game quality, this, we discovered, actually leads to being able to generate a few games that are actually not bad. We have been designing a series of systems where we try to use these methods together with human designers. So for example, if you're creating a strategy game level, it gives you feedback on how balanced the level is, what kind of challenges it is. It also gives you suggestions. Maybe you want to add some resources over here or something like this. Some of our work in level generation builds on evolutionary computation. We have been active in trying to develop new algorithms that help you create not just one solution, but a wide variety of solutions. These algorithms are generally called quality diversity algorithms, meaning that you're trying to find a distribution of solutions that are all good, where each solution is the best one in its neighborhood, which they can then use to pick and choose like solutions from, either manually or automatically. I also have a new book coming out called Artificial General Intelligence, where I take on the debate about are we going to create AI that is generally intelligent, and what does that very even mean? I try to explain how some of the methods are working and current trends in AI research, but I also try to question what do we mean when we say general intelligence? What do we mean when we say intelligence? And I don't think we know. It's an attempt to calm the debate a little bit, because people say that AGI is imminent. We're going to have extremely powerful AI models that can do really interesting things and are going to help us with a lot of things. But I don't think we're ever going to have artificial general intelligence because we don't know what it is. The real use for this is, of course, like these AI methods working together with humans. So I think that when you do AI for games, we're really doing AI for the society that we are going to live in in the future. And a lot of the ideas here about generating environments, testing environments with automatic players, learning to play in the style of particular players, replicating styles, understanding people from how they play, these ideas are going to come carry straight over to the metaverse or whatever we may call it of tomorrow.